Come on, good. It's a great honour to be here today to pay tribute to George Plant, a great man, an Irishman, a Republican. And when I think about George Plant, I have to be honest with you, apart from the courage of the man and the fine principles that he lived his life by, the thing that strikes me most was the vicious nature of how he was taken down by the Irish government in 1942. When a civil trial didn't deliver what they wanted, they set up a military court, a kangaroo court, to ensure his execution. And it's extremely important to remember George Plant in terms of our struggle for freedom. But it's also important to remember what happened to him and who did it. There's a party that called themselves Republican. They killed this man. They murdered him. We should never forget that. Today, we commemorate the men and women of Ireland who 102 years ago resolved to take on an empire. And against impossible odds, they changed the course of Irish history. And they lit a flame that burns brightly today. It was an event that had repercussions and, 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 and was heard all around the world. Revolutionaries in Russia and India looked at the first country to strike a blow against the empire. And I think it's appropriate today that we remember other events internationally. I'm delighted to see a Palestinian flag here today. Not surprised, by the way. Tipperary is all supported the Palestinian people. And, you know, this week we had a Russian, ambas a Russian diplomat expelled. I'm still not quite sure why, frankly. Apparently it's on the word of the British security services. Those are the same services that still weren't released that Dublin Monaghan files. But here I wanted to call clearly for the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador and Israeli diplomats. Yeah. Yeah. These people represent an apartheid state. And two days ago they gunned down 16 Palestinians. It was like a rerun of Bloody Sunday in our own country. And this government should act, but I won't be holding my breath because they have no principles whatsoever. Now, I want to reflect for a moment on, on, on this government, because they tell us, and I hear it every day up there, I'm sick to God of hearing it, how well the economy is doing. They tell us we're back to, to boom times. Yet the fact of the matter is, we have the greatest housing crisis since the 1930s. In our Limerick constituency office, every day we have people desperately coming in, being forced into homelessness by greedy, racked landlords. Children. Three and a half thousand children homeless in our country today. 10,000 people homeless in emergency accommodation. We have the worst health crisis in the history of the state. 80 people in trolleys in Limerick. I'm sure it's no different here in Tipperary. We have a mental health crisis. We have a suicide crisis. Anywhere you drive now where you pass a bridge, you'll see flowers. I saw them myself in Carrick and Shore this morning. And, and, and no resources for, men, for mental health. No resources for people who desperately need them from this government who tell us we've never had it so good again. Absolutely shameful. But I want to reflect in terms of the year that's in it. This year marks the centenary of the 1918 general election, an election in which the vast majority of citizens turned their backs on Westminster and voted for Irish Republicans. This was a changing Ireland led by a revolutionary generation, a generation of gales, of socialists, feminists and nationalists that found common cause in ending the union in Irish equality, sovereignty and freedom. That election became known as the Sinn Féin election. The MPs elected refused to go to Westminster and established the first doll. These included the first woman elected, Constance Markovich. And I can assure you all today that our MPs elected in the occupied six counties will not be attending Westminster. We will stand by our Republican principles. And we won't be listening to the likes of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, who've abstained from elections in the six counties for a hundred years at this point in time. Ireland is again at a point of great change. The Orange State is gone. The perpetual unionist majority in the north has ended. The forces of conservative Ireland no longer enjoy the unquestioning support of citizens. The old orange and green is now part of a rainbow of colours and identities. A new Ireland is emerging. We are a changing party a growing party, a new leadership building on the legacy and work of all those who came before, building on the work of Jerry Adams, Martin McGuinness and others. And let's take a moment to take, pay particular tribute to Martin McGuinness, who passed away just a little over a year ago. I was lucky enough to be at Green Arm last, last weekend in Derry, 
where 5,000 people turned out to remember Martin. And I can tell you it was so moving. And you can see there that people realise the difference that man made. The courage of the man in all stages of his life. And, and the contribution he made to the United Ireland to come. So comrades, we have an opportunity to end the union, to end partition and build a new and united Ireland. That new Ireland must be about more than adding the north to the south. It's not a 32 county three state we want. It's a new republic. The Republic of Tone and Connolly, Markovich and Farrell, Sands and McGuinness. The challenge for us, for this generation of Republicans, is how we shape that change, how we build a new and united Ireland. An Ireland where the resources of our country belong to the people of our country. An Ireland of equal rights in which everyone has a place. An Ireland that provides jobs, homes and health care for its citizens. An Ireland that promises security of a roof over your head and fair pay for a fair day's work, an island that guarantees workers' rights, an island where no family lives in fear of the knock on the door from a landlord, where no one has to choose between heating a home or feeding a family, an island where power is with the people and not with a landlord coalition for the wealthy, an island of reconciliation and peace, an island where everyone has a place in society and a chance to succeed, an island where the politics of the past the not a weak politics, the sleeping politicians of the past remain in the past. Delivering Irish unity, comrades, is the key to building that new republic, the opportunity to build a new. Now we know there are those on the side of the status quo who will try and frustrate the change and will continue to demonise republicans. But they cannot and will not succeed. Be they rejectionist unionists, Tories in Westminster, or the elites in Dublin. Those are the groups seeking to impose Brexit and EU frontier across our island. They care not for our citizens, our rights, or our economy. They're now attacking the Good Friday Agreement, an agreement that belongs to the people of all of Ireland and not the Tories in London. We face many challenges. We need to prepare and win the coming elections, both the local elections and the general election. I want to pay particular tribute to your local councillors in Tipperary, Martin Brown, um, David Dunn and of course Catherine Carey, our Mayor of Clonmel. Uh, they're in contact all the time with me and I can tell you, and you know already how hard they work, they're a tremendous team and a team that's going to bring growing success for our party in Tipperary. Further challenges to, to, to secure special status for the North within the EU and to meet the challenges of Brexit. To secure and win a referendum on Irish unity. We will have institutions re-established in the North with Michelle O'Neill as Joint First Minister. But we'll, we will only re-establish them to secure the rights of citizens to marriage equality, to language rights, and to a Bill of Rights. We will continue to promote the cause of reconciliation. Some may try to frustrate that change, but they cannot win. Comrades, the challenges are great, but so are we. We must mobilise people and organise for change. We must look to our heroes of the past, like George Plant, like Martin McGuinness, and organise for the future. So let's use Easter to commit ourselves to building a new and united Ireland, an island for all of our people. Chucky Arlott!